Got another case study coming at you. We have a 56-year-old female who came in after a grand level fall with complaints of neck pain and paresthesias in her arms and her legs. This is the patient's CT scan. So for comparison of normal, this is what a normal C2 bone, the odontoid bone, should look like on a CT. And this is what this person's CT of their C2 bone looks like. Here is the MRI imaging, one series here. So three questions to address in this case study. One, what type of fracture it is it? Two, what is the treatment? And three, can they recover from this type of injury? Comment if you know the answer. Follow me for the full explanation video tomorrow. So let's go through the answers of this case study. Remember, we have a 56-year-old female who suffered a ground level fall with severe neck pain and weakness in her arms and legs. The patient had the CT imaging, which does show degenerative disc disease, which some of you pointed out, but more importantly shows this severe fracture. So what we see is the bone that should look like this, should be a triangle shaped bone. Now it looks like this, which is fractured across and then has a piece of the bone that's actually jutting out right here. This is a severe type three odontoid fracture, which is highly unstable. And the patient also has some kyphosis and cervical cord compression on the MRI. This is the MRI. So you see the spinal cord, which comes down through here, this gray thing, normally should not be this narrow right up in here. This compression of the spinal cord is responsible for the patient's weakness. So the first question was, what type of fracture is it? And it's a type three odontoid fracture. Here are the types. Type one is where the tip is broken off. Type two is where the entire dens is broken off right at the body of where it inserts. And type three is it involves the body of the C2 bone. Here is an AP view to show those types. So type one, type two, type three. So given the severe instability of this and the patient's neurological examination, the patient was admitted to our neuro ICU. Goal one is to reduce the fracture. So we place the patient in Garner Wells tongs. Looks like this, where we place these pins into the skull with this ring here that we can attach weight on. Here is a picture of what this looks like, but basically we can hang weight from the head. And in this patient, we did 30 pounds and basically pulled the head in this axial plane to reduce that fracture. Here is the CT and traction, and you can see that we got pretty good reduction of that fracture already with just a little bit of traction. And on the APCT, you can clearly see that this is a type three fracture. I was happy with the results of the traction, so we decided to take the patient to the operating room the following day for stabilization. Here is the post-operative CT where we fuse the patient's skull base all the way down to the mid cervical spine and got near complete anatomic alignment of the fracture. And this also cleared up the spinal canal to where all the cervical pressure was relieved. Here's the patient's x-ray that shows the hardware from the occiput or the skull, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Given the nature of the fracture, the patient likely had osteoporosis or poor bone quality. Therefore, we needed a lot of immobilization after surgery, so I elected to put the patient in a halo vest. This is a halo vest. This will allow for optimum stabilization while the patient is healing, and they actually neurologically recovered as soon as they were in traction, so patient's all better. Here are the results before traction and after surgery with a beautiful correction.